from historic hotels offering luxury accommodations and all manner of supernatural phenomena to sprawling lake expanses where the restless spirits of victims dumped long ago are still spied on moonlit nights. Are you ready for the most haunted murder sites in the United States? Number 5. Boulder Hot Springs Boulder Hot Springs, located off Hot Springs Road, southeast of Boulder, Montana, is a historic hotel turned spa and modern lodging that's recognized for its soothing mineral hot springs. Historically, lands now holding this establishment were once referred to by native tribes as Peace Valley, under the belief that all peoples from all wakes deserve to enjoy the springs as a place of gathering, healing, and celebration. Through the mid-1800s, one James E. Riley spied opportunity surrounding said springs, and circa 1863 would open a saloon, hotel, and bathhouse that would largely cater to the the local working class. As Riley's Resort grew in popularity, in 1881 the hotel was expanded, and by 1882 construction on an entirely new structure was launched. Sadly, later the same year, James passed on from smallpox, after which, together, Abel C. Quaintance and Cornelius Griswold would purchase the land, continuing Riley's project. As the business aged, it would change hands several times, undergoing countless renovations and modernizations, until, in 1990, it was purchased by one Ann Wilson Scaife under a limited partnership, and after which it would close for a full year for its most extensive makeover to date. The Boulder Hot Springs Hotel and Spa remain open into the present, offering luxurious, albeit television, alcohol, and smoke-free accommodations. One infamous legend tells that, long ago, a working girl named Simone was stabbed to death by a mine executive from Butte in the old office. Her spirit has been sighted roaming the premises, clad in an old-fashioned wedding dress, and is often spied gazing from windows by those passing. Reported across the property are disembodied footsteps, extreme hot and cold spots, and the smell of old-fashioned perfume in the lobby, and a number of guests have described being awakened in the middle of the night to the sensation of someone tapping, shaking, or even hitting them in an attention-seeking manner. Lastly, a ghostly group of children has been sighted and heard playing in the halls after dark, and a number of male guests have described feeling a cold female frame slip into bed with them and sometimes chilling lips pressed against their cheeks. Number 4. The Drake the Drake, located off East Walton Place in Chicago, Illinois, is a luxury, full-service hotel that's been recognized as a landmark since the time of its opening, and more recently for the range of big names it's hosted. Historically, in 1916, the lot was acquired by brothers Tracy and John Drake, who, together, along with family and friends, would pool resources to finance the construction of the grand old hotel, which would first open its doors in 1920. On December 6th of 1933, the day after Prohibition ended, the hotel's esteemed cocktail bar and restaurant, Coke Door, was established, and in 1940, the building's sign was illuminated. Over the years, the Drake has hosted the likes of Winston Churchill, Eleanor Roosevelt, Hugh Hefner, Frank Sinatra, and many, many others, and in 1980, it was purchased by Hilton International. The Drake remains open to this day, offering 535 rooms, a six-room presidential, multiple restaurants, ballrooms, the Palm Court, Club International, and, according to legend, its fair share of resident ghosts. One popular legend tells of Adele Bourne Williams, who was staying at the Drake in January of 1944, when an unknown woman, described as being around 50 in age, and is wearing a black coat and flowered or red-trimmed hat, walked into Adele's room and shot her, resulting in her death hours later at St. Luke's. 
Adele's killer was never captured, and some claim her murderer's spirit still wanders the hotel, bound to the location of its horrendous crime. To this day, many report encounters with a spectral woman in black who often emits an intimidating vibe. A second story tells of Bobby Franks, a child who was kidnapped and murdered in 1924. Following his death, Jacob and Flora Franks, his parents, moved into the hotel for the remainder of their lives. Their entities have been sighted throughout the building, usually in good spirits, no pun intended. One final tale tells of an unnamed woman who was attending a New Year's Eve celebration circa 1920, when she walked in on her fiancé in the arms of another woman. Distraught, it said this lady threw herself from the building, by some accounts from the roof, by others from the 10th floor. Her spirit, a beautiful woman in red, has been spied roaming the property, most often in the Gold Coast room, Palm Court, and on the 10th floor. Number 3. The Tar River The Tar River, cutting through the northeastern portion of North Carolina, is a 215-mile stretch of fresh water that, on its journey south, actually transforms into the Pamlico River and later flows into the Pamlico Sound. Historically, the current draws its moniker from its utilization as a major transit line for tar-laden barges en route to the sea. Encompassing land was initially inhabited by tribes native to the region, with oral histories dating back to around 1000 BCE. And later, through the 16th century, the region was charted by the Spanish, with the province of Carolina forming in 1629. Vessels traveling the river through the era were created largely from longleaf pine, with pitch used on their masts and tar for natural caulking. Through the 1730s, as the industry boomed, the early community of Tarboro formed on the river's upper banks right at its dividing bend, and by 1760, it would act as a significant port town. In 1999, the river and surrounding area were devastated by Hurricane Floyd in what some deem the worst natural assault of the lands in over five centuries. And in 2016, the locale would undergo another battery courtesy of Hurricane Matthew. The Tar River remains open to the public as a popular travel destination amongst boaters, anglers, and nature enthusiasts alike, and, according to Tail, offers a range of paranormal activity, with those frequenting the flow reporting orbs in the backgrounds of their photographs, disembodied voices heard from the forests, and the constant feeling of being watched or followed. The most famous legend surrounding the Tar, especially right near Tarboro, tells of an intimate dubbed the Tar River Banshee. As the story goes, during the Revolutionary War, a man moved to Tarboro to establish a mill along its waters, but was later attacked by the British for his support of American troops, and was dragged out of his home to be executed on the river banks. Before the soldiers could kill him, however, he warned that should they end his life, that a vengeful banshee would be summoned to exact his revenge. It said the soldiers laughed at this threat and executed the man by firing squad anyway, but that as soon as they did, the banshee rose from the waters, impervious to sword and firearm, and slayed every last troop. It's said the Banshee is still out there to this day, prowling the river, its unearthly cries heard through most nights. A variant to this tale tells that if one jumps in the river right where the miller was executed, they might just be followed home by the Banshee, who may just foretell the exact moment of their demise. Number 2. Big Moose Lake Big Moose Lake, located at the head of Moose River in the Adirondacks in New York, is a 1,242-acre body of water shared between both Herkimer and Hamilton counties that covers portions of the towns of both Webb and Long Lake. 
Historically, the Adirondacks boasts signs of human habitation dating back to as far as 13,000 BCE, with European settlers arriving much later through the 17th century. Following the American Revolution, the state of New York was granted ownership of the region, but unfortunately, resulting from a mounting government debt, was forced to sell. Big Moose Land was settled through the 19th and 20th centuries by European Americans traveling the first rail line through what was previously uninhabited country. The town of Long Lake was settled in 1833, with a community called Wilmert following in 1837. In 1896, Wilmert would be renamed as Webb. Today, Big Moose is a popular destination amongst tourists, sportsmen, and nature enthusiasts alike, and is recognized for its remote, serene, and overall breathtakingly beautiful scenery. But the lake carries with it a much darker reputation, one surrounding stories of the tragedy of Grace Brown. As history and legend have it, Grace was the daughter of a local farmer and worked at a Gillette skirt factory out of Cortland. It's said Grace and Chester Gillette, nephew to the company's owner, begin a romance in secrecy, as Chester couldn't be seen in public with a factory girl. In 1906, Grace discovered she was with child and attempted to convince Chester to marry her. Eventually, Grace moved to South Otsalik, but continued writing Chester, urging him to take her as his wife. One day, Chester wrote Grace to act if she'd like to hit the water with him, and thinking he was going to propose, she said yes. Sadly, however, her assumption couldn't have been further from reality, and on their little getaway, Chester beat Grace with a tennis racket before pushing her into the lake with full knowledge that she was unable to swim. Grace's body washed ashore the next day, leading to Chester's charge, arrest, and eventually, execution. But ever since her passing, reports of a phantom woman spied on the lake, most often at night and most often under the moonlight, have persisted. Additionally, Grace's apparition has been known to manifest within homes, cottages, and campsites nearby, and has been encountered in the waters screaming for help, a scene that appears so real it's resulted in emergency personnel being contacted. Grace's story is so prominent it actually inspired the 1925 novel An American Tragedy by Theodore Dreiser, and was later adapted in 1951 into the film A Place in the Sun. Number 1. The San Miguel Mission the San Miguel Mission, located in San Luis Obispo County in California, is a historic Spanish mission widely recognized as the singular mission out of the many in the state that's retained most of its original layout and structures. Historically, the mission was founded in 1797 by Spanish Franciscan Father Fermin Francisco de la Sun, with the site selected as a way to bridge the gap between the San Antonio Mission to the north and the San Luis Obispo Mission to the south. Sadly, in 1806, the original church was destroyed in a fire. In 1808, a sacristy, granary, storage rooms, carpentry post, and 27 living huts were constructed and from 1816 to 1821, a new mission was erected. Impressively, interior artwork was painted by native inhabitants to the region and remains unaltered to this day. In 1834, the Spanish Franciscan friars were exiled by the new independent Mexican government, resulting in the church being sold off. And in 1846, the site was passed to business partners Petronio Rios and William Rios. Reed. Reed would move his family into the mission building, opening the others as an inn that only accepted gold as payment. This business model saw steep profits until the night of December 4th in 1848, when Reed was catering to six outlaws and said a bit too much. The following night, on the 5th, these bad men murdered Reed, his pregnant wife, their four-year-old son, and everyone present at the inn, all in all totaling 11 casualties, before clearing the property of valuables. Ironically, Reed must have hidden his gold fairly well, as it was never located. 
Victims' bodies were buried the next day in two mass plots within the mission's old cemetery, and eventually all but one of the murderers was apprehended and executed. In 1859, the site was reacquired by the Catholic Church, and by 1878, the parish of San Miguel had been founded. Unfortunately, in 2003, the mission was badly damaged in the San Simeon earthquake, resulting in repairs lasting in until 2009. Today, the church remains an active place of worship while its outbuildings act as both museums and historic monuments. Chillingly, the property is said to be haunted by the restless spirits of those murdered on site and possibly by others buried nearby, and many have reported encounters with entities of six separate adults, a 15-year-old girl, three four-year-old boys, and, disturbingly, Reed's unborn child. Activity at the mission is said to get much stronger after dark, and it's speculated that the adjacent cemetery and sanctuary, which holds somewhere in the neighborhood of 2,000 bodies, may have a hand in it all. Across the grounds, many have described the sounds of children playing always heard from just out of sight, and one documented report details a little girl who encountered a spectral little boy who she described to her grandmother as having bad owies on his head and neck. Reported across mission grounds are orbs and photographs, visions of blood dripping from the walls, and the sounds of pleading, sobbing, and screaming heard from the chapel. The apparition of Mrs. Reed has been witnessed attending daily tasks from her life or running around frantically calling for her family, and the spirit of a man in a blue peacoat thought to be Mr. Reed has been spied hurrying about. Also reported throughout the area are extreme cold spots abnormal battery death, and shadowy silhouettes thought to be the spirits of outlaws who cause living nearby to feel uncomfortable, threatened. Interestingly enough, legend furthers to tell the gold these Rough Riders sought might still be lying around, undiscovered, likely somewhere within or very near the old mission, resulting in their souls' unrest. Lastly, and unrelated to the infamous killing spree, are tales of run-ins with a ghostly friar who appears so real he's usually overlooked by the living who often turn for only seconds to find he's vanished into thin air. With its ridiculously fascinating history, long list of purported hauntings, and slew of associated urban legends and ghost stories, we felt there really was no better choice than the San Miguel Mission as our pick for the most haunted murder site in the United States. Thanks for tuning in to our list of picks for some of the most haunted murder sites in the United States. If you enjoyed hearing our histories and ghost stories as much as we enjoyed telling them to you, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn notifications on so you know when fresh content is on the way. Throw us a like if you feel we've earned it, and most importantly, share this upload and our channel with anyone you think could use a good scare. We'll see you next time.